the thing about political parties is that uh, often people are either left wing or right wing, you know, the, and often they'll vote for the same party uh, regardless. And um, uh, they bash the other wing and think they're wrong. And both sides do that. I don't think it's occurred to people that usually most politicians are trying to do what they think is best for their constituency in the country. Uh, obviously there's corruption in politics. There's corruption in humanity. So why would that be any different? So, um, politicians are the least lying to people a lot of the time. But it's a dirty job that someone's got to do. Uh, you think it's easy running a country with millions of people in it? You do it. I'm so sure how you'd well you succeed. You might have all your bright ideas, but I can guarantee you, for half of you, Tom, Dick, and Harrys, if you put your ideas out there, you'll be mocked and derided more than the politics who are trained on political correctness. Just because you think they're doing a daft job, you'll be mocked harder, unless you're skilled at it. So the polis, I think, in the end, are probably doing the best that they know how to do. And they're pushing what they think is right with their political agenda, or they represent the ideals which speak to their way of thinking. Some are in it for themselves, I suppose. But I think more often than not, the polis are usually trying to do the right thing for the country and their constituents and their electorate. So perhaps we should give polis a bit of a break at times. We'll have a 28. And have a smoke. The Advancing Prosperity Party is really, it's, I suppose theoretically you could become a party in time. But uh, at this stage it's really just a, a platform for political thinking, a think tank as it were, where I put my sort of basic snapshots of policy ideas into the uh, the website nohybooks12.angelfire.com and um, generally I make that available for anyone who wants to have a bit of a geezer at it have a bit of a look through it and sort of if they want to think of the Dan Daly's political sort of ideologies I'm not so sure if I'll necessarily agree with all the ideas in there permanently 20 years down the road I might look at some of the things and go oh, that might be a bit daft or something like that in reflection, I might think that they might not be the best idea. Or possibly in reflection, 20 years from now, I might say, brilliant idea. I don't really know for sure. At this stage, I think I generally represent what's in there. And some of the ideas have been around for a while. So, um, it's political thinking nonetheless. And, um, yeah. My ideas, I suppose. So, um, I'm not 100% sure if they're sort of motivated by scripture, because scripture doesn't say a huge amount politically apart from laying down legal legal concepts of avoid sinful behaviour and generally be an upright sort of righteous person. Well, that's more of the, the domain of the religion and morality rather than the necessary politics. Even though the Torah law is a legal structure for a country. And it's sort of being constructed politically in a sense. God is the boss of the country, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. But politics, 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 politics. I can never become the um. I can never become a politician in Australia because there's no way I'll I'll give up my UK citizenship. I'm a dual citizen of the UK and Australia, and now you you have to give up all foreign citizenships to be a politician in Australia, and I'll never do that. So I'll never be a poly in Australia. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't think it would ever happen normally enough anyway. But um, I'm not 100% sure if the same rules apply in the UK. Whether I, I'd have to give up my Australian citizenship, I wouldn't really know. But there's no way I, I'm, I'm content being a dual citizen and uh, there's no way I'll give up either citizenship. I'm happy enough with both. So, um, yeah. Level 28.